once he's cleaned himself for the umpteenth time. And, of course, it's at this point that everybody starts to look at their own house cat sitting next to them, thinking how very similar he is to them in their beha in his behaviour. And, of course, that is... Mm. Oh, here we go. Mm. That's better. He's definitely pointing in a certain direction. He's pointing southeast. In fact, towards Chitwa, where I thought I heard the last lion called at around 4.30 this morning. Yeah, about 4.30 this morning. And then, no, then again at about 6, just after we went live. And I think maybe he's hoping for a response from there. Now he looks a little bit tired again, because he had to get up so fast. I'm still not sure why he got up quite so quickly. I'm pretty sure he's going to call again. I don't think he's hungry. I don't think he's hunting. I think he is... Uh oh, here we go. There we go. I believe the sound has gone a little bit wobbly on my side. There we go. We're okay. Okay, let's carry on. This is wonderful. Let's carry on following him. Come on, Wendy, the old bat. Hello there. There he goes onto the road, just in front of us. Oh, there's a big water hole here. I'm going to have to turn some lights on. Oh, there's also a fairly substantial forest of trees. <laughs> yes, we will get by. <laughs> Chrissy, you say, do I feel the roar rattle my bones? Yes, I do, actually. Um, it's not so much a... Yeah, it's a rattling of the ribcage. You can definitely feel the bass. The best way I can describe it, and I'm sure many of you have done this, is the next time you're at a wedding or a party or, a, God forbid, a nightclub, um, go up to the speakers, from which the DJ will probably be playing some dross. And... Uh, oh, this lion is having a very fine time relieving himself. Uh, and what you can do, if you stand next to the speakers, face on, uh, you will feel your chest pounding with each sort of pump of the bass, or the bass drum, the kick drum. And it's that frequency that makes your sternum rattle, or feels like your sternum's rattling. And a lion is able to recreate similar low frequencies. And that's, what, that's the kind of feeling you get when a lion roars that closely to you. He's going again. Okay, I'm going to 
and start the car. I like the way my hat looks in infrared. But he seems to be moving on to the road. Now he's laying down again. There he is. This to the left. Oh, it's wonderful. I find lions quite difficult to watch during the day when they're doing nothing, unless they're little cubs, which of course are always great fun. But when they get up and they start performing properly, or performing like lions, performing in the way that has made them their most revered, probably of the world's predators. You find them on the sigils and flags of countries all the way from Sri Lanka to Britain, all the way down Africa. And at one stage, this animal was the most widely distributed mammal in the world. Let me say that again. At one stage, this animal, the lion, was the most widely distributed mammal on planet Earth. There's only one other mammal that has ever managed that, and of course that's us. And it's no surprise that where we went, the lion disappeared. Until now, they survive in these pockets that we call game reserves. He doesn't know that, of course. As far as he's concerned, this is how it's always been. I guess that's one of the dangers of, um, of, I suppose, not being in that, of growing up in a time that is different from a time before. Children being born now will be quite used to less than 10% of the Earth's landscape being saved for wilderness. But a hundred years ago, that would have been unthinkable. And a hundred years from now, it will probably be unthinkable because it will be considered just far too much. And when I say, I mean, I often think about this when I talk about it on the school drives, I say there are probably fewer than 20,000 lions left. 20,000 to a school child or to somebody who doesn't know anything about conservation, even if I said that to adults who knew nothing about conservation, I think that was cost quite a lot of lions. 20,000 lions is an, is an enormous number. But when you consider it in comparison with what it was, and when you consider it in comparison with the smallest human settlement, 20,000 would hardly register on a map. And yet there are only 20,000 or fewer than 20,000 of these magnificent creatures left in all the world. And it's important somehow that we get that message across to the future leaders of our planet and the current leaders. They understand how very few that is. So that his species, quite unlike he is doing right now, never goes to sleep. Yes. You see, he thinks I'm being very profound. You can see that. Yes, thank you, Louise. <laughs> All right, we're going to wait and see if this lion calls again. Tristan, I think, is back on Juma, sans leopard, sans bush baby, but let's see what he's going to find. <laughs> 